The following is a translation to the English language from a volunteer. The one who speaks is your servant, Dr. Javier Palacio Celorio, Minister of the Kehila, the Congregation, Gozo y Paz, Joy and Peace, Hanabe Shalom, headquartered in the city of Tehuacan in Puebla, Mexico. We invite you, your family, and friends to visit us online at www.joyandpeace.us. There you'll find study materials that you can download and give away for free. This study is titled, The Restoration of the Torah. If you take a look at your Bible, in the book of Acts, from the Apostles, Do Kuanim, on chapter 3, verse 21, it reads, Whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which Adonai has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. I want to let you know there is a small error in the translation. It is not to receive because Yeshua HaMashiach was already in heaven at that time. The correct word in Hebrew is Laketh. Therefore, the original translation of Acts chapter 3 verse 21 says, Who must remain in the heavens until the restoration of all things which Adonai has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. This is good news. This means that Yeshua HaMashiach is waiting in heaven right now. He himself remains in heaven until the restoration of all things. Not a few things, but all things. Yeshua HaMashiach will be faithful to what he has declared, and not to what the world thinks. For example, the playing of the shofar, the lighting of the menorah, the prayers in the original Hebrew language, the invocation of the original names, the observance of the holy feasts, the holy dances, etc. You see, with so many horrible things going on in the world today, so much evil, joy and peace is what the world needs the most. Joy and peace are the fruits spoken of in the Bible, in the Tanakh. They are from the Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit. The correct translation in Hebrew is the Ruach HaKodesh. In order for you and I to have these fruits, we must first live our lives the way Yeshua HaMashiach commands us, and not the way the world wants us to. This is why true believers and followers of the Mashiach, the Messiah of Israel, keep all his mitzvot, or commandments. In the world today, the ancient covenant, or the Old Testament in the Bible, has a perception of being no longer in effect, something that doesn't involve us anymore, a stubborn text that's null, void, difficult to read, and done away with. The fact is, the complete opposite is true, you see. Without the ancient covenant or the Old Testament in the Bible, we would not recognize the name of the Mashiach, the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua HaMashiach. Certainly there are commandments that don't apply to us anymore, but many of these commandments do apply to us even today. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to convert to Judaism. What we are doing is restoring. I repeat, we are not converting to Judaism. What we have done is to restore. Restoring is to return something to its original condition. On the other hand, renovating something would be to modernize it. Therefore, this is not renovation, this is restoration. For example, if you enjoy cars from the 1950s and 1960s, and you were to install upgrades, like a high-performance engine, power steering, a CD player, you wouldn't be restoring, you would be renovating. The restoration is what Adonai God is doing with his children on a global scale right now. His holy teachings that have been damaged and lost in the past will also be restored in the future. Adonai God wants us to return to praying, praising, and worshiping the way that He had established from the very beginning with His Torah Emet, and not the way that the world does so today. What is a Torah Emet, you might ask? In Hebrew, it means the instructions of truth. The Torah Emet are the instructions that yod heh vav -He, Yahweh, the Almighty Creator and Lord of the Universe, gave to Moshe, to Moses on Mount Sinai. I repeat, the Holy Torah are the instructions that yod heh vav -He, Yahweh, the Almighty Hashem, King and Creator of the Universe, gave to Moshe, to Moses on Mount Sinai. With his Torah Emet, we have returned to a pure form of worship. This is the difference between restoration and renovation. And even today, classic cars and antiques are worth more money and have a lot more value when they are restored with matching parts, original serial numbers, good documentation, etc. How much more then is this true for the word of our eternal Creator?
How much more effect would this have on our lives if we were to worship and pray the way that He had originally intended for us to do? That is why we pray to Yeshua HaMashiach in the original Hebrew language. We sing praises to our Creator in Hebrew and keep the original holy feasts of our Creator, including the original day of rest, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, that He commanded in the book of Leviticus chapter 23. There are 613 mitzvot or commandments in the ancient covenant in the Old Testament and 1050 mitzvot commandments in the New Testament in the Brit Hadashah. Before Yeshua HaMashiach comes, all things will be restored for the remnant of souls that have chosen the narrow path of holiness, renouncing all of their sins with a repentant heart. If you who are listening feel a calling from Adonai Hashem Yahweh for all that I have said, Contact us and we will be there to serve you and answer any questions about the Holy Torah, the instructions of Adonai Hashem Yahweh, and our Savior Yeshua HaMashiach. The word Torah in the Bible was mistranslated as the word law. As a result of this, there is in fact two interpretations of the word law. One interpretation refers to the law of sin and death and the other interpretation refers to the Holy Torah. How can we prove this? Go ahead and turn your Bible, your Tanakh, to the book of Romans, on chapter 8, verse 2. Here the Bible says, For the law, or Torah, of the Spirit of life, in Yeshua HaMashiach, has made me free from the law of sin and death. You see how it makes a distinction between the law of sin and death and the Holy Torah, the Spirit of life? Another example of this is in the book of Galatians, on chapter 2, verse 19, where it says, For I, through the law, or the Torah, died to the law, to the law of sin and death, that I might live to Elohim, to God. If you want to learn more about this subject, there is a study titled, The Misinterpretation of the Torah, that you can also download free of charge. The Holy Torah of Adonai Hashem Yahweh was never abolished. If you turn your Bible to the book of Matthew, Matthew, on chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible reads, Do not think that I came to destroy the law, the Torah, or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Again, in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 44, it says, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law, the Torah of Moses, and the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me. If you turn your Bible to the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7, it says, The law or Torah of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Another Psalm on chapter 119, verses 44, the Bible says, so shall I keep your law, or Torah, continually, forever and ever. You see how it mentions forever and ever? The Holy Torah is forever. It can never be abolished. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verses 23, the Bible says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law, or Torah, a light. And right there on Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 9, the Bible says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, or Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. I'm going to read this one again because it is pretty serious. On Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9, the Bible says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law or Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. In the book of James, on chapter 1 verses 25 it says, But he who looks into the perfect law or Torah of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. You see, Yeshua HaMashiach himself also kept the Holy Torah. This is how he remained perfect up until the end of his life. And that's what he means when he says he fulfilled it and finished it. So you see, Yeshua HaMashiach never came to destroy or change the law, the Torah. Without the Holy Torah, we would not fully understand the Brit HaDashah, the New Testament. In the year 315 AD, the Emperor Constantine changed the original day of rest of our Creator to Sunday. If you turn to the book of Exodus on chapter 20 verse 8 it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of your Elohim. In it you shall not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your manservant nor your maidservant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Yahweh blessed the Shabbat, the Sabbath, and hallowed it. Sunday, or Reshon, is the day of the sun. Many ancient civilizations that were enemies of Israel worshipped the sun. For example, ancient Egypt worshipped the sun. Ancient Babylon worshipped the sun. Ancient Rome worshipped the sun, etc. These were all worshippers of the sun, and many still are to this day. Therefore, we must not follow what Roman Emperor says. But what Hashem Yahweh the Almighty has said in his Torah Temet, his instructions of truth, the Shabbat, the Sabbath, is a true day of rest. It starts on Friday at sundown and ends on Saturday at sundown. The Feast of Yahweh. You can find this in your Tanakh and your Bible in the book of Leviticus chapter 23. These feasts are a mikra or a rehearsal of the things to come in the millennium with Yahshua HaMashiach. If you notice in your Tanakh and your Bible, it says the Feast of Hashem Yahweh. It does not say the Feast of the Jewish people. These are not Jewish feasts, even though they have been inherited by the Jews. These are the Feasts of the Almighty Hashem Yahweh. Yahshua HaMashiach died during a feast on Pesach. He resurrected during a feast in Bikurim. He gave His people the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, during a feast in Shabbat. And He will also return during a feast on Yom Kippur. All these feasts point to what will be done during the millennium with Yahshua HaMashiach. In fact, he was conceived during a holy feast. You can find this in your Tanakh and your Bible in the book of Yohanan, John, on chapter 10 verse 22. He was also born during the feast of Sukkot. All the feasts are intertwined with Yeshua's life. Yahweh the Almighty gave these feasts as an inheritance to the Jewish people. But these feasts do not belong to the Jewish people. They belong to Hashem the Almighty Yahweh, our Creator. This is why we must keep the Torah and Yahweh's feasts, and not the feasts of the world. With such short time left now, we must not allow anyone or anything to deprive us of these blessings from our Creator. The first feast is called Pesach, Pasqua. The second feast is called Hamatzah, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The third feast is called Bikurim, the first fruits. The fourth feast is called Shabbat, where the Ruach HaKodesh was given. The fifth feast is called Yom Teruah, or Roth Hanashah. The sixth feast is called Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And the seventh feast is called Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. The word Shua in Hebrew means salvation, or to be saved. The word Yah is short for the name of our Creator Yahweh. Therefore, when we call on the sacred name of Yahshua in Hebrew, we are saying that Yahweh is our Shua, or our salvation. Yahshua. Yahweh is our salvation. For those of us who follow Yeshua HaMashiach and His mitzvot, His commandments, we are no longer considered Gentiles. The first believers in Yeshua HaMashiach were called Nazarenes. You can find this in the book of Acts chapter 24. When a person repents and turns their life in to Yeshua HaMashiach, they are no longer considered Gentiles in the eyes of our Creator Yahweh. What is a Gentile? A Gentile is a person that has idols, that is paganized, that acts according to their own flesh, that does their own will only, that pleases their own flesh. How can we prove this? In the Bible, in the Tanakh, in the book of 1 Corinthians, on chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, You know that you were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb idols, even as you might be led. Rav Shaul, or Paul, says, When you were Gentiles. When someone recognizes that Yeshua HaMashiach is the King of Justice, the Melech Sadiq, the King of Kings, the Melech Melecha, and turn in their lives to follow Him, they are no longer considered Gentiles in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. With faith, the Holy Torah was established. Faith in Hebrew is pronounced Emunah. Emunah in Hebrew means three things. To believe, to trust, and to obey. Without these three things, Emunah, or faith, does not work in a person. With faith, with Emunah, we confirm the Holy Torah, and we do not destroy it or abolish it. 
You can find this in the book of Romans on chapter 3 verse 31, where it says, Do we then make void the Torah through faith? By no means. On the contrary, we establish the Holy Torah. Rav Shaul or Paul himself kept the Holy Torah and all of the mitzvot, the commandments. All the prophets in the Old Testament, in the Torah, and in the New Testament, in the Brit Hadashah, also kept the Holy Torah. The people of Yahweh are Jews through Yeshua HaMashiach, biblically speaking and spiritually speaking, but also completely once we follow Yeshua HaMashiach and repent. In the letter to the Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12, the Bible says, We are now citizens of Israel, that in the past we were without the Mashiach, the Messiah, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, and strangers from the covenants and the promises, having no hope. In the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Israel has not been destroyed. Rav Shaul, Paul, says that Yahweh has cast away his people. Has he, really? By no means, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. This means that all the promises and the covenants in the Tanakh and the Bible belong to the people of Israel and to no one else, unless they choose to become part of the children of Israel. Now, if and when you decide to receive and follow Yahshua HaMashiach, He must first become your Lord through obedience to the Holy Torah and all His mitzvot, His commandments. In order for Him to be called your Savior, He must first become your Lord. He cannot be your Savior if you are not following the Holy Torah and the mitzvot, the commandments. Again, He must first become your Lord through the keeping and following of His Torah, His instructions, and all the mitzvot, the commandments. Then and only then can he be called your savior. After we repent, we must remain in Kedushah in holiness. Remember, no one can be saved by keeping their own commandments. Salvation has been understood the wrong way. We must repent, follow Yahshua HaMashiach and his holy Torah, and remain in Kedushah in holiness until the end of our lives or until he arrives. Many people believe that from the time Yeshua HaMashiach was here on earth until now, people were saved by grace alone. And from before Yeshua HaMashiach in the ancient covenant, the Old Testament, people were saved by works. This is an error, a lie from HaSatan. May Yeshua HaMashiach rebuke him. Because in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 8, it says that Noah, Noah, found grace. Moshe, Moses, was also saved by grace. You can find this in the book of Exodus on chapter 33, verses 12 through 17. David was saved by grace. Solomon was saved by grace. Abraham was saved by grace. These prophets were all saved by grace. Grace has always existed. There has always been grace. We must remember that our faith, our emunah, means nothing if we do not obey. Our faith must be an obedient one. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses 17, the Bible says, for therein is a righteousness of Yahweh, revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The righteous shall live by faith. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith in Munach, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. The truth is, we do not keep the Torah, the Holy Torah, in order to be saved. It is because we are saved that we keep the Holy Torah and the commandments. Remember, men can't be saved by keeping their own commandments or abiding by their own rules. There are covenants in the Tanakh, in the Bible, that Hashem Yahweh has made with man. There is a covenant with Adam. There is a covenant that Yahweh made with Noah, with Noah. The covenant that he made with Moshe, with Moses. There is a covenant that he made with Abraham, with Abraham, the Brit Milah, the circumcision. The covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham, with Abraham, the Brit Milah, the circumcision, is very special. We are not saved by the circumcision alone, but Rav Shaul Paul says in Romans chapter 3, the circumcision is of great advantage. It works in our favor. For more information about the Brit Milah, the circumcision, the covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham, with Abraham, listen to the study titled Discovering the Truth. In the book of Devarim, in Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 12, it reads, You shall make for yourself fringes upon the four corners of your garment with which you cover yourself. This is describing clothing similar to the garment that was worn by Yeshua HaMashiach in the temple in Jerusalem. This is the same garment that the children of Israel wear to worship the King of Glory, Yahshua HaMashiach. 
It is also in the book of Numbers on chapter 15, verses 37 through 40, it says, And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and tell them to make fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, that they put upon the fringe a blue cord, and it shall be to you a reminder that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahweh, and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, with which you used to go and fornicate, that you may remember and do all my commandments, and be set apart unto your Elohim Yahweh. This is what Yahshua HaMashiach wants for us. He wants us to be Kadosh, holy. The word Kadosh in Hebrew means holy. Three times Kadosh is only Hashem Elohim Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. If you are listening and you are a Jew, I want to let you know that we love you. I also want to let you know that Hashem Elohim will never ask you to leave the Torah Temet in order to receive and follow Yeshua HaMashiach. When a person in the world converts from a religion to the living God of Israel, they must first leave their traditions and customs of their religion. But in your case, if you choose to follow Yeshua HaMashiach, you do not have to renounce the inheritance of your ancestors. Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. On the contrary, you must continue to love and follow the Torah Demet with all your heart. Yeshua HaMashiach is about to arrive in shalom and peace for those of us who follow him. As for the unbelievers, wickedness is certainly getting worse on a global scale. Our planet is screaming from all sides that it is not well, that things aren't getting better for humanity. Yeshua HaMashiach will be here soon. And for those of us that love and follow Him, He will deliver us from the coming wrath of our Elohim, our Creator. If you want to learn more about Yeshua HaMashiach and the Torah Temet, the Torah, contact us and we will be more than happy to be of service to you. Remember, at our Kehillah, our congregation, all of the study material is completely free of charge. You can download videos, audios, and texts that you can use to grow spiritually. Please distribute them to your family, friends, and to your community. We don't have a lot of time. In the book of Yoshua, Joseph, on chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, Hashem Yahweh says to Yoshua, to Joseph, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people shall you divide an inheritance of the land, which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the Holy Torah which Moshe, Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it, to the left or to the right, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the Torah shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate upon it day and night, so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous. Have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for Yahweh your Elohim is with you wherever you go. This is the word of our eternal father for Yeshua, for Joseph. But the same goes for you and I. If we keep his mitzvot and follow Yeshua HaMashiach and remain in Kedushah and holiness, all things will be successful in the end. After the death of King Solomon, the kingdom of Israel was divided into two parts. Judah and Benjamin remained loyal to Israel, but the other ten tribes of Israel were broken up were dispersed. They were broken up because they refused to keep the mitzvot, the commandments of Hashem Yahweh and His Torah, to the point that they were driven out of the land for not living their lives according to the Holy Torah. The majority of us come from these ten tribes of Israel. This means that most of us have Jewish ancestry without us even knowing it. Yahweh took away all of the blessings and all of the promises from these ten tribes. But now, in this awakening of the prophetic third day, the Almighty Hashem Yahweh is returning these blessings and promises back to these ten tribes. In the Bible, one day for Yahweh is like one thousand years, and a thousand years for our Creator is like one day. Therefore, when the Bible says that we are at the wake of the prophetic third day, it is because two thousand years have passed since Yeshua HaMashiach was on earth, and we are now entering into the prophetic third day. In the book of Hosea, on chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, it reads, Come and let us return to the Lord. For He has torn, but He will heal us. He has stricken us, but He will bind us up. After two days, He will revive us. 
on the third day he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. The remaining ten tribes were punished and driven out of the Holy Land as a result of the disobedience to the Holy Torah. Yahweh has now forgiven these ten tribes for their disobedience and is now returning their heritage back. The problem is that most of us do not know about this because so much time has gone by. We have forgotten how to keep the Holy Torah, including the seven holy feasts, the Shabbat, the covenants, the original language in Hebrew, and the original names, etc. In the book of Jeremiah on chapter 31 verse 3 it reads, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness I have drawn you. Again I will build you up, and you shall be rebuilt, O virgin of Israel. You shall again be adorned with your tambourines, and you shall go forth in the dances of those who rejoice. This is an awakening that we can now lift up our spirits, repent of our sins, separate ourselves from the world, follow Yahshua HaMashiach and remain in Kedushah and holiness, completely separated from sin for the coming of the Mashiach, the Messiah of Israel. To declare that Yahshua HaMashiach is my Lord is to say that all the areas of my life are governed by Yahshua HaMashiach, that no area of my life is influenced by Hasatan, by Satan, but that all my life is completely governed by Yeshua HaMashiach, we must open our eyes and be conscious of this because the world will soon tremble from so much natural catastrophe that will occur in the near future. We do not want this to happen, but it has been written, it has been prophesied in the Tanakh, in the Bible. Therefore, it will happen. And while this is happening, Hashem Yahweh will send His Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, and all his true followers will be torn away from this wicked world in order for us to escape right before the wrath of Hashem Yahweh, and at that time his wrath will fall on the entire earth. You see, in the past it was only Sodom and Gomorrah that was doing these things. Now it is the entire planet, the entire earth, that is prostituting itself in sin for the same worship to Hasatan, to Satan. May Yahshua HaMashiach rebuke him. Adultery, fornication, witchcraft, all these things that 99% of the world is engaged in today is nothing more than satanic worship. The people need to know these things and repent. The times that we are living in now are worse more than ever. They must come to the only true living God of Israel, Yahweh, and follow His Son, Yahshua HaMashiach, and remain in Kedushah and holiness in order to be saved and escape Yahweh's wrath. The proper names of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost have never been translated. These names cannot be translated. They are eternal. When people say hallelujah, most of them don't know or have no idea that they are pronouncing two words in Hebrew. The first word, hallelujah, means exalted or may you be exalted. And the word Yah is short for Yahweh and Yahshua. Therefore, when we say hallelujah, whether we like it or not, what we are really saying is exalted is Yahshua, exalted is Yahweh. The prayer that we say for the blessing of our food is pronounced. Baruch Yahweh Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Hamotzi Lehem Min Haaretz Blessed are you God Yahweh, King of the universe, that have given us the product of the earth to eat. Every Friday at sundown, we receive the Shabbat, the Sabbath, together, at the table, at home, with our family. We drink a small cup of wine and eat Shabbat bread, which is braided bread. We give thanks for the blessings of the week, bless the children, and pray in Hebrew in this way. Baruch Adonai Yahweh Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Bri HaHabet Blessed are you Yahweh, our God, which have given us the fruit of the vine. Now I would like to give you the blessing of the Torah. Blessed are you Yahweh, our God, who have given us the Torah, the instructions of truth, and have placed eternal life in us. I will now finish with the blessing that you can find in the book of Numbers on chapter 6 verse 22. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make His countenance shine upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shalom in Hebrew means peace. If you are still listening to this, there might be hope for us yet. Remember, all of the study material is completely free of charge at www.joyandpeace.us. Follow Yeshua HaMashiach and remain in holiness and Kedushah for the coming of our Lord and Savior.
Only He can save us from this wicked world. Shalom Braha, peace and blessings. Omen, Biomen.